What's up, good people? It's your boy, Leroy McKenzie Jr., the Impact Builder. And I know y'all used to see me on that third Monday, but tonight, I had to do this tonight. I had, I had, I had to do it tonight because it was coming up. I had someone who I just knew, knew, knew and know you all needed to know about, needed to know what's going on because you don't want to miss it. Uh, and y'all know about that in a, in, a, in a few minutes and everything like that. But this is, I promise you, as I put in one of my other posts, this is going to be a rich conversation. And when I say rich, I'm not talking necessarily financially, or I should say in addition to possibly financially, I'm talking emotionally, intellectually. We about to get into a conversation that is going to make you smarter, that is going to make you better just as a person spiritually. I know this is, you know, th that you will enjoy this conversation. And I'm gonna let this gentleman that is here with me tonight, whose assignment that is, <laughs> and I know he is up for that assignment. Uh, he is just a great brother. We have become just fast friends, fast business associates, just the great things that he is doing. His story is phenomenal. He'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, but this is the brand new development series brought to you by uh, the Black Professional Men and J uh, JNF Enterprises. And it is the mission of BPM, Black Professional Men, to ensure the future of the African-American male. And we do that by bringing you um, great uh, knowledge, information, and resources brought to you by some just some phenomenal individuals in the talks that I have and the conversations that I have uh, with folks that come on that, that will enrich you not only um, personally, but also professionally, and not just professionally, but also personally. And that's what these conversations are all about, because we want to enlighten, empower, and equip you what you do not just for uh for life but you on the personal side and the professional side so um welcome to the to the uh this episode i, I want to thank you all for tuning in uh for those that are watching the replay or will watch the replay thank you thank you thank you uh grab your all i'm gonna tell y'all is grab your pen grab your peg because you're gonna be taking so, a lot of notes tonight um and, and i'm gonna let this brother introduce himself and then we're going to get uh, into our conversation. And it is none other than, um, let me see, he's a business coach, he's an entrepreneur, he's a speaker, he's, he's um, the creator of an institute. Just, I, all right, I'm going to let y'all, I'm, I'm going to let him tell who he is and everything like that. But his name is, is Mr. Uh, Ike. And I don't want to mess up the last name, Ikoku. Did I get it right? Ike Ikoku, and you was right there on the <laughs> edge. <laughs> but, but what I'd like for you to do, brother, is just start off by just introducing yourself to everyone, telling them just a little bit about who you are, um, what you you know what you do, and then we'll get into uh, our conversation tonight about living life on fire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, you got me so hyped. I'm like, I wish I had a front row seat. Like, I want to be in the audience just sitting back and just taking notes, taking it all in. It is all good, Leroy. Thank you so much for the intro. My name is Ike Ikoku. I am the founder of the Righteous Billionaire Movement, where our vision is to raise 10,000 billionaire leaders by the year 2030. These wait are minute, leaders. Wait, who wait, are wait, not... wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. You, did you say ten thousand billionaires with a with a B? Ten thousand billionaires with a B. There's only about twenty seven hundred, and I'm not trying to get to ten thousand total. I'm trying to raise up ten thousand new billionaire That's leaders, it. right? So these are leaders, men, who are not only going to have the financial capital, because obviously if you're swimming in the lake of billions, you got a lot of financial capital. But more importantly, they're going to have the leadership capital to be able to step into this world and in one word become world changers, because they're going to steward their finances, they're going to steward their leadership capital, and they're going to step out into the world and they're going to restore righteousness to all seven spheres of our culture. We're talking government, we're talking politics, we're talking the economy, we're talking about family, we're talking about education, media, arts and entertainment. 
the major pillars that hold up any society, any nation, we are suffering from a lack of leadership in a lot of those pillars. And so I feel impassioned. I feel a calling to try to raise up the next generation leaders who not only have been taught what it's like to be a servant leader, but who have the financial capital to actually be able to make change in parts of our economy, parts of our nations, where finances, quite frankly, is the preferred path to being able to see the change you want to have see happen within our economy. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be here, man. I'm excited for uh, you know what we're going to chop it up. We've been chopping it up for I a while right. now. You know how we roll. <laughs> Absolutely. Now let me let me start by asking you this: what what brought about that challenge that you just talked about? What was it that clicked in your head that said yes. that I want to? I want to to build because my thing is now this is for 2022. This is building season. This is building season. What yeah. are we doing to what are you doing? And I'm asking everyone this. What are you doing? What are you building in 2022? So yeah. what got you started in, in that? What made you want to think about that 10,000 billionaire started on that course? Yeah, man. So, you know, Plato says the unexamined life isn't worth living. So I go, the only life worth living is the examined life. When was the last time you took your life and you put it up under a microscope to see what you can't see with the natural eyes, that which can only be discerned spiritually as you make time in your life to try to figure out, well, I've been through chapters one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way through chapter 12 of my life. And I just breezed right through that 40 some years of my life encroaching upon 50. And he's like, man, when did you pause to try to realize what were those decades? Why were they pivotal in life? What were they preparing you for, right? Mm -hmm. You just want to kind of continue down this drunken stupor of what I call mediocrity? Or do you want to live an extraordinary life? And so when I took time to pause and to look at my life story, look at the chapters of my life, I saw this crescendo mm -hmm. that was building for this moment. And as I looked at everything that I had done personally, professionally, in business, through my education, through the school of hard knocks, the adversities that I had, I had overcome, it was all pointing to this one thing. We're living in a very pivotal time right now, Lior, as you know, whether you're looking at social inequalities, uh, you're looking at economic inequalities. There's a lot that's placing pressure on our nation right now. Mm -hmm. And as things have been unfolding with the pandemic, my wife was just uh, all about justice. She just was revealing a lot of things that quite frankly flies below the radar. Mm -hmm. A lot of people aren't paying attention to, right? Whether it's the work that's taken place in Africa, which on the surface looks like a really, really good thing that's being spared up by none other than Bill Gates and his push for vaccines mm -hmm. in third world countries, or the stuff that's happening here, where we are being incentivized to go get a vaccine. Yeah. Like, do you ever stop and pause and go like in decades and centuries, when has the government ever said, we will pay you yeah. to go get a vaccine? Yeah. I've, I've never said that. You're right about that. It's never been done. Never been done. So that should lead to, what was that, Arsenio Hall? Things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> like what's underneath the surface of that, right? And so we're not going to make this too political here. We don't want to expose a whole bunch of stuff. But everything that you see happening in the news and that's happening through our government isn't always necessarily the truth. It's not necessarily what uh, what you need to know about what's going on. It's what they want you to see, right? Mm -hmm. And so she started doing some snooping around and, and finding out about a lot of things that have hit our nation over the last couple of years. And as she started uncovering all this stuff, it kept pointing back to these billionaires who were behind the agenda of what we are seeing that's being developed and what's being pushed forth in our society. And so as this continued to happen, I asked her the question. I was like, well, honey, you keep, you know, you're exposing a lot of stuff that the average individual is not aware of. Like, God must be showing this to you for a reason. I know you're an intercessor, so you need to pray. <laughs> but ask the guy upstairs, why does he keep burdening your heart with this mm. stuff? 
Mm. And I kept asking, like, go find out, go find out. And then I woke up one morning, Leroy, with tears streaming through my eyes. And I heard the Lord speaking. And just like Sanford and Son said, you big <laughs> dummy. <laughs> like, don't you understand the past decade of your life and all the things that I've been through that, that I've put allowed you to go through the fact that you've made and lost seven figures twice the fact that you've been through this joseph uh experience where you've had to completely surrender your dream about what your life is supposed to look like the very dream that i gave you you've had to surrender how you thought that was going to play out in order for me to break every ounce of flesh and greed and anything that would preclude you from fulfilling the very purpose that i called you which for me, for decades, I know that I've had a, a love affair with money and that that was how God was going to, I've had prophecies over my life that we would be, you know, uh, benevolent people, putting people through college and paying for people's education and just have oodles and oodles of wealth. And I've had false starts, you know, mm -hmm. been a millionaire multiple times and lost it and made it and lost it. But God was building within me something that would last. And so what I'm doing now with the Righteous Billionaire, Righteous Billionaire Movement is I am very intentionally targeting wealth with kingdom purpose, the ability to advance God's agenda across the nations, which if you look at the Bible, it says that the only reason a nation will ever excel, do brilliantly well, is because there's righteousness. Righteousness has to be at that foundation. The only reason nations are ever exalted is because righteousness is at the foot. And if you look at the way our country is right now, we can say that there is definitely a lack of righteous moral leadership across every fiber of our nation. And so I wanna raise up people who not only know how to steward the gift of leadership well, but can eliminate finances and money as being an, a, a deterrent to them being able to move an agenda forward that's going to glorify the kingdom, that will advance his kingdom, that will restore righteousness across the major uh, pillars of our nation, and that will ultimately make this nation great. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, you, 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 I don't want you to just gloss over it because you have a journey that you've been. Oh yeah. <laughs> you have a story that that is being told um yeah. and I, I want you if you can tell that story from an entrepreneurial perspective but i want you to talk about one um your understanding that you gain but then two um from a leadership um uh dynamic and what you've learned uh as far as being having to be that leader that you yeah. that you are and everything like that if you can talk a little bit about that and, and and your organization and your business sure sure so i grew up you know in and around the financial services industry i still hold my cpa license today had that for over two decades but i've held professional licenses to include cfp investment advisor insurance in my past so i said early on i've made and lost seven figures the second time this happened i had um I just lost it all after my first round of making it. And it happened right around right around 9-11, uh, lost everything and went through significant losses with onshore, offshore investments, experienced um, being separated from work for the first time ever. And it lasted 18 months, which just didn't make any sense because I, you know, on paper, I looked like an impeccable character to hire and then lost my real estate portfolio. So we ended up filing bankruptcy and starting all over. This was in 2003. And within five years, I went from being bankrupt to building another seven figure uh, wow. net worth. And all of that happened because I, I, part reason was because I left the confines of corporate America and I decided to bet on myself. Part of the reason why I went through 18 months, this is a guy who had worked for two of the big six accounting firms, had a master's degree, graduated top of his class, you know, just stellar resume. I couldn't pay somebody to give me a job. Mm. And God knew that I'm so stubborn that the only way he could get the message to me that my season in corporate America was up. 
and that the next epic chapter of my life was as an entrepreneur was to literally shut every one of those doors down. Mm. And so those doors got shut down. I finally, I, I tell everybody I'm a, uh, I'm a forced entrepreneur. I didn't step into entrepreneurship because I was that kid who was selling you know, <laughs> chocolate and cookies and stuff. Nah, I got forced into entrepreneurship, but it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. Mm. I used to hear coaches and mentors tell me, man, you can, you can 10X, you know, you can turn your monthly income into an annual income. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like some good sales pitch to have me sign up for your program. I'm not interested. <laughs> But I kid you not, man, I went from uh, probably what, making 50 grand at the time when I left corporate to making more than 10 times that as an entrepreneur, going from basically zero to over seven figures in net worth and, you know, six figures in passive income in just five years, right? So I hit 2008, 34 years old, financially independent, got to where I'm typically trying to get clients to by the age of 65, realized that that was a little peculiar to say the least, right? This is before we got all these, you know, teenage internet millionaires popping up left, right, and center, right? <laughs> so I said, there's something to that. So in 2012, I released my book called Winning the Money Game, Separating the Myths from the Truth, Everything You Don't Know About Achieving Financial Independence. And what I had uncovered was there were nine financial myths that the financial services industry had been shoving down people's throat as the proverbial pathway to go to achieve your financial goals. I call it the mom and dad plan and everything that's wrong with it. Mm. And so I exposed those myths. I shared what the truth was and sort of the pathway that I took. So I released that book in 2012, bestseller, first week on Amazon. And uh, life seems good. Uh, at the top of my game, right? I got a thriving investment advisory business, a best-selling author. I've been on all kinds of TV stations. Huffington Post has asked me to blog for them. I'm doing that for them. I mean, so it's like to the outside world, it's like king of his castle. <laughs> <laughs> and it started to get to my head a little bit, right? And I believe God took notice. And he's like, so you think this is all about you, right? Mm. This is all what you've accomplished, right? And so he says, well, I, I think I need to teach you a few things about the way life operates. So I never say God is the source of evil or bad things that happens in your life, but he allows you to endure or go through things that you can only experience the fruit of by being in the fire. Mm -hmm. And so in 2014, I experienced two devastating business betrayals, lost over seven figures of our net worth, saw my income drop to about a third of what it used to be. And in one of those betrayals, it was a classic Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme. So I'm an investment advisor at this time. I have my clients, you know, invested in one particular thing. And this guy decides to go rogue and he goes rogue and he actually flees the country. So we're left holding the bag, losses in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to different people at different levels. And so the SEC comes in, they do their thing, they investigate and... You know, they build out an estate to try to salvage what they can. Two and a half years later, it becomes apparent to me in 2016 that because one, this doesn't have any celebrity names involved. It's only $200 million as opposed to 50 billion like Bernie Madoff is. Mm -hmm. So they weren't going to expend any resources to go try to track that guy down and bring him to justice. But because the SEC has oversight on investment advisors, they decided, well, we're going to attempt to hold Ike responsible for his loss, for his client's losses. So they filed complaints against me and my companies. And that kicked off a two-year legal battle that I call a modern-day version of David versus Goliath. Because <laughs> Here's a little bit of Ike in Atlanta. Nobody knows anything about me going up against a behemoth called the SEC. Yeah. <laughs> and as a praying man, you know, I seek the Lord. I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to do about this? I'm like, this is the antithesis of my character. To even have my name associated with anything that spells fraud is just an indictment on my character. So yeah. I'm really, really taken aback by just, you know, the gumption of them to even want to do that. So I pray, I seek the Lord. And he says, son, go forward. You're going to have victory in this. I go, are you sure, Lord? He says, Trust me, you're going to have victory. I know, right? Okay, I'm going to go find my sling, <laughs> find my five stones. <laughs> I'm going to go out there and battle and try to give it my best shot. 
so I hired what I thought was the best legal representation. And we went at this thing for almost two years. And at the end of it, I was running out of money, literally. And my attorneys were like, okay, we're at the stage and we're getting ready to go to trial. And it's going to cost you X amount of dollars. And I'm like, I don't have X yeah, amount absolutely. of dollars. Yeah, absolutely. So long story short, we decided to settle the case with the SEC, to settle it on a neither admit nor deny basis. Part of that settlement meant paying out over 300000 uh, as part of the settlement, giving up my investment advisory license for five years. I disclosed to all the other governing bodies that I hold a professional license. My CFP license goes down the same track. They're like, we'll suspend it for five years. You can reapply in 2023. I keep my CPA license. I keep my insurance license. But even getting errors and emissions insurance is like virtually impossible because everybody's like, ah, you got a scarlet letter with the CPA. We don't want to you know, provide you with insurance. Uh, basically couldn't do anything with that. So here I am, 2018, middle of 2018, I am broke because I've exhausted all my assets. My income is down to about 10% of what it used to be. Think about that for a second. Could you live off of 10% of what you make right now? That's where I was at, middle of 2018. Broke, income at 10%. Uh, my reputation is shot because if you Googled my name, I mean, even till today, you still see a lot of flattering comments that the SEC and what I would call ambulance chasing attorneys have to say about me or the case or whatever took place, right? So reputation shot. And this whole time, I'm like, the only reason I did this, Lord, was because you said I was going to have victory. So like, help me out here, like up in the kingdom in heaven. Like, how do y'all spell victory? Because what <laughs> I'm experiencing down here looks nothing like it. <laughs> For sure. Woo. And in that moment, in that quiet time of literally crying out to the Lord, he says, son, here's the deal. You are experiencing the victory that I promised. Here's the problem. You chose to define victory on your own terms. See, I was expecting an external victory. Mm -hmm. I get to keep my license, my professional oh. reputation, keep my business, my mm -hmm. assets, my income, all of that stuff. And the Lord is like, as devastating as all of those losses are, Bar none, the most devastating thing was the loss of your identity. Because Leroy, I came to that place where the only reason I felt good about himself was because I could look at all my professional accomplishments, my business success. I could look at the number of zeros in my bank account and I felt good. I accepted who I was. And so he said, son, if nothing else, the fact that you have come to a place where you realize that your personal self-worth will always far exceed your personal net worth. Ooh. That's a huge victory. So it's this whole idea of creating this distinction between our human being, who we are as children of God versus our human doing, the very thing that he may have called us to do, right? So victory number one was right there. My wife and I will celebrate, celebrate 25 years of marriage, April, 2022. And Papa in heaven was like, dude, you are finally loving your wife the way she's been yearning to be loved in your marriage. And that's a huge victory. I got three kids. My oldest is a girl. She's just turned 15. Um, my son is 11. My youngest daughter is six. And I used to go on vacation. And because I had wrapped myself around what I did, Mm -hmm. I'd be like a fish out of water. If I didn't have my laptop, I couldn't work, right? So just missing those magic moments with my family. The Lord's like, look at you now. You are actually mm -hmm. enjoying quality time with your kids because you don't define yourself by what it is that you do anymore, right? So just all these huge, huge areas of victory that were internal in nature, not external, but that were necessary to prepare me for what he was preparing me to do now. And so having been through that, man, I understand that, dude, one of, the, one of the worst things we can do is to have wealth and not know why. It's more tragic to have wealth and not know why than to actually have mm -hmm. death and not have life. And so wealth with purpose is a huge, huge component of everything that I do with helping people basically shrink 30-year financial independence timelines down to as little as two to five years now with the work that we're doing to help move the righteous billionaire movement and its vision forward love that i told y'all this that this conversation was going to was going to be rich 
is going to be rich. And, and it's not about, not about the, like, like you said, not about the zeros in your bank account. But do you have, oh, I love that. Do you have victory in the yeah. personal aspects of life? And that's that's the 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 kind of funny, ironic thing about God and, and the way that, that he looks at things versus how we look at things. Yeah. Like you said, he said, hey, you're looking at victory from this lens. Mm -hmm. You're not looking at victory from this lens. Look at what you could have lost. Because yeah. your wife could have said, you know what? I, uh, I'll, I'm see, out. I'll see you later. I'm out done. like last year, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm, yeah. I'm not doing this. I'm not going through this. Kids, and and and, and we we don't sometimes we we lose the the we lose the vision and the scope that we have because we I, I think sometimes especially us as men we become so consumed with this thing that I've got to. I, I, I gotta, I gotta make it. I gotta build this. I gotta have that. But I, I tell people, to, I tell men specifically, and especially when, when I hear, and especially in this day and time, I hear men and women. The narrative is, well, a man is supposed to protect and provide, which is true. I said, but when you think about protecting and providing, what lens are you looking at it through? Is it just that financial lens that you're looking through and saying he's He's supposed to um, protect me as, as a family so that we have a roof over our head and all these things yeah. and, and provide because he's supposed to have the job, the six-figure income that people are all talking about and everything like that. <clears throat> I said, but that's not, that's not the gist. That, that's not all that it encompasses. I said, you can have someone who is making the six-figure, making all the money that you could ever want, but mm -hmm. ain't never home. Never home, never spending time with the kids. His kids have grown up. He don't know, he don't know any of them, couldn't tell you about those significant points in their lives yeah. that, that you want to experience as a parent. That's to me, those are the other things that I don't hear people talking about and understanding. And when you talked about victory, you look at that. I I I I, I could gather to say if God were to ask you which would you rather lose the the license that you lost or the wife that you have yeah no doubt, no doubt. that's an easy no, easy answer that's a no brainer <laughs> it's like okay look yeah i know i know that's gonna hurt but this right here would hurt even more than yeah. anything so that's that we, we we have to be careful in how we look at what victory looks like you know, and and, uh, and I think what you're telling us that it is just so powerful and, and just so uh, so significant for us to be able to understand, um, you know, in as we go on, not just as entrepreneurs, but just as as men um, specifically, but uh, when it comes to our families and everything like that, you know, mm -hmm. we, we have to, to, you know, sometimes have to, sometimes we can take a step back, or we can be forced to step back to actually yeah. come to that real realization and everything like that. I, I want you, if you could, um, I want you to talk a little bit about your um, your company um, and then um, what it is that you all do. And then we'll, 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 we'll go into um, the, the products and services that you have. Um, and then I wanna get into these, uh, like I read to you earlier, uh, these couple of things that I saw that I just thought that were phenomenal that you that you talk about. And yeah. I think it's your philosophies that you have as far as business is concerned. Yeah, so really everything I do really kind of supports uh, what I call the three pillars of the Righteous Billionaire Movement, which is entrepreneurship, leadership, and wealth. So my journey, which I kind of shared a little bit early on, is, you know, in terms of generating wealth, for me, what I've found is that the common denominator in that is being an entrepreneur. If you look at the vast majority of the billionaires that we have out there today, the vast majority of those folks have a business of some sort, whether it's in real estate or whether it's in brick and mortar type businesses, that's mm -hmm. typically been the engine that's helped drive some of their wealth creation. Um, so, Entrepreneurship is a really big piece. And another reason why I feel like entrepreneurship is really, really key is, you know, we talk a lot about the seven realms of wealth and, and one of those is spiritual. 
uh, which really speaks to your relationship with the Lord and, and just the lens through which you're seeing life, right? Are you just interpreting it based on just your mind and what you can perceive? Or are you discerning truth about, you know, how you've been uniquely created? And one of the things I know about the way we've been created is the Bible says we're made in the image of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like Jesus is our big brother. When God made us, he said, this is good. And then he gave us a mandate to step out here, to be fruitful, to multiply, to take dominion over everything that's been created. Now, here's what I know about fathers, right? Fathers are very proud mm -hmm. and fathers love to see their children shine. Now, before anything was ever in existence, if you believe the word, if you're a Christian, you know the word that says that, you know, the whole earth was void and darkness and then God spoke, Jesus spoke and boom, everything started showing up, right? So that creative genius that was in our big brother is also in us because mm -hmm. we're created in the bridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And being that I'm a father of three kids and, and being blessed with a son, blessed with two daughters, I mean, one of the best compliments I can get is when somebody walks up to me or my wife and they go, oh, I just met your daughter, Ella. I just met your son, Zion. Man, he is such a spitting image on you. He walks like you. He talks like you. He tells jokes like you. And I just be like grinning left to right, like Kool-Aid smile. Well, if the one who created everything that we see today is the one in whose image that we are created, what's the biggest compliment that we can give our Heavenly Father? Is when people catch us in the act of creating. Ooh. Now, here's my personal opinion. My personal opinion is that that creative gene that is in each and every human being is oftentimes stifled, if not flat out shut down when you're an employee. Once you burst through the seams and you step into the entrepreneurial light, you now give voice, you give life to that creative genius that's always been in you and people catch you in the act of creating and they go, you're just like your daddy. <laughs> and he's smiling upstairs, the big Kool-Aid smile. Like, yep, that's what I always created him to do. Rule, have dominion and create. So, Entrepreneurship is key. I know that, you know, one of the quickest and fastest ways to really accelerate your income is as an entrepreneur. And so we have programs and resources uh, that provides what I consider to be one of the best entrepreneurial opportunities out there for people that are looking to step out of corporate and do something on their own, which is to simply help one of the segments of society that quite frankly keeps our economy up, which is small business owners, help them do the very thing that they are constantly thinking about, which is how to grow their business, how to grow their profits. And so we have a turnkey program and system that could take anybody. I mean, our stuff is so polished. We could take a five-year-old and turn them into a business coach and mentor for other small business owners, right? And they can, they can earn a very lucrative intern. So entrepreneurship is one. Leadership is the second one, right? Uh, I believe you only go in life as far as your leadership will take you. So leadership isn't one of those things. We read enough books, we put it up on the shelf, we go check mark, I'm done. Leadership, you live that daily. There's a lesson in leadership that you are exposed to. There are lessons you've learned that you get tested on daily. And it's a, it's a lifestyle, right? So leadership is really, really key. And then the third piece is wealth. And we spend more time watching, you know, it used to be soap operas, now it's reality shows. I mean, there's a bazillion things that people will give up themselves to yet spend very little time in learning why the only time God ever cursed in the Bible literally was in the parable of talents called that man all kinds of names for being lazy and fruitless with the gifts that he had given him, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, any Bible scholar will tell you that when it comes to money, the Bible has more to say about that topic than any yeah. other topic, salvation included. Money is the only thing God ever says is in direct competition with, his, with your affection for him and ultimately your purpose and destiny in his life. Because you're either going to be mastered by money or you will master money. And when you master money, you never seek after money. Money seeks after you because you uncover, you discover what your purpose is. 
That's what Luke is all about, right? On Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom. Understand the reason for your being, your purpose, because that's why I created you. And when you do that, all these things will be added to you, right? Money only changes value. And there isn't anything more valuable than understanding how you were created, which is to deliver and give value to other people and doing that very thing. Because when you do, money is going to come chasing after you in, uh, in very, very abundant ways. Uh, so those are the three things we focus in, man. So whether it's the business side, whether it's the coaching and mentoring on the leadership stuff, or whether it's showing people some of the things that I've learned in over 20 years of being in the financial services sector, in how in shrinking what normally would take people 30 years to accomplish down to two to five years. Uh, these are all things that we focus on, you know, within our business. Yeah, I mean, it, that is just so, uh, to, to understand what you just said, people have to really grasp, you know, um, that the, the concept and, and what it is that you talk about, um, with people have been able to deal with it, especially when it comes to the financial piece, the money piece of our lives, because like you said, and I forgot what they said, but money is mentioned more than anything else in the Bible. It's mentioned um, a whole lot. But the one thing that people always tend to get wrong or misquote out of the Bible is the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. And, but most people say love of money yeah. I mean, um, they say money, money, yeah, is, the money is the root of all, <clears throat> as opposed to the love of money, which means that we are placing more value in money than we are in God, like you talked about. Yeah. And when we do that, when we misplace the two or have a misplacement of the priority of putting God over money, that's when we, we run into the difficulties and, and, and the things that we found because he tells us, hey, I'm a jealous God. <laughs> you, you don't put anything or anybody before me, because if you do, you you will be going against what it is that I created you for. Natural and, order. Yep. Yeah, and and I, and I tell people that when I just talked a little bit about being a protector and a provider. Well, the third P that I tell people that we don't talk about is to produce. Mm. I said, what are you producing, God? Everything that he created, he created with the ability to, to produce yeah. everything. Even when he created man, he said it is not good for man to live alone because man, us as Adam, we were the only thing that could not produce. Mm -hmm. Adam could not produce or reproduce so, yeah. in the state that he was in by himself. It wasn't until he created woman that he was able to say be fruitful multiply and he could then he could then walk in that assignment of producing and yeah. and creating like you said to be creative because that's what we're created to do and we do god a disservice when we don't walk in that creative space when we do not produce because like you said everything in the bible that did not produce god cursed yeah killed everything yep. fig tree. <laughs> trees fig tree the, the 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 man the the man that said um you know what must i do to be saved you said give away all of your riches you ain't mm. hear nothing else from here that man did you hear <laughs> 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 nothing else about him because he wasn't producing the 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 servants with the talents the five what was it five three and one or five four and one, one yeah. the one that just hid his talent and then just brought the one back. He said, go. Yo, he said, he took the, took the talent from him and gave it to the one that, that multiplied his by 10 and gave it to him. Because he, he, he assigns us to produce. He assigns sure. us to do whether, and it's not just in the financial realm. It's, it's in our spiritual life. It's in our professional lives. It's in our relationships. Every aspect of our lives, we are called to produce and to Sir. make it better than what it was and, and everything that we do. Now you talked about, well, you talked, you gave us the, the three, um, the three pillars that you talked about. I, I want you to really quickly, if you can, um, and then we, I want to talk about the, the, the masterclass 
Mm -hmm. that's, that's coming up, coming up uh, yep. this Thursday. And this will, I'm sure, probably be a part of what you talk about in the masterclass. But can you give us just really quickly um, three keys that entrepreneurs should understand about how, <coughs> excuse me, how to live their life on, or oh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll save that one for, for the, when you talk about the masterclass. Um, okay. But how, um, how can, um, can you talk a little bit about your seven, uh, the seven critical spheres and then the seven, um, the seven mastery realms of wealth that you, um, that you, that you create? If you could talk sure. a little bit about those. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about the seven spheres of our culture, which is right. where we are all called to exert influence over, right. right? Whether that's at home as a father, as a mother, uh, whether it's within the economy, whether it's through government, uh, politics, religion, if you're called to the church, uh, if you're called to the mountain or the sphere of education, or maybe media, or even arts and entertainment, right? If you've got a very creative side that could show up within arts and entertainment, these are all the seven major pillars of society. And, uh, you know, my belief is it's God's desire for him to be glorified in each one of those mountains, not anything else, <laughs> not any other deity, not any other person. That's why I'm all about trying to restore righteousness to those seven major spheres. We talked a little bit about this, which is the whole idea. You talked about victory, kind of mm -hmm. understanding the different dimensions of victory, which is a good lead in to really understanding what it truly means to be wealthy. Because we talk about wealth a lot of times and people just automatically go to financial. And that is the seventh in the realms of wealth that we deal with. We start off with spiritual, which is what is the relationship with your heavenly father look like? How are you nurturing? How are you growing into that? Uh, I'll give you a quick story. My full name is Ikenna, I-K-E-N-N-A, -N -N that's the full first name. Now, that translates in my net, in my language, in, in, I'm originally from Nigeria, that translates to father's strength, God's strength. That's what I was called. That's what I was, in. it wasn't by chance, it wasn't by, God specifically ushered that name through my parents to me because it spoke to who I was and what my destiny is. Now, here's the interesting thing about life. The entire course of my life, because I came to this country as a teenager in 1988, and because my dad didn't plan properly, I was actually financially, emotionally, and spiritually abandoned by my dad. And so I went through years of, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen because I makes it happen, mm -hmm. right? And it served me well to be that disciplined and that much of a go-getter and being very, very dependent on making it happen by myself, right? That's the only way I survived. Otherwise, I'd been a statistic. Yeah. But the very nature of who I've been called is to recognize that my strength that I bring to the world and that allows me to be everything that I am comes from him not from me and so my natural dad didn't do the best job in modeling what that father-son relationship should be but it's the very core the very essence of what's gonna like shoot me forth like a rocket into everything i've been called so my entire life has been this battle of recognizing this thing that i've been called is where my power my strength lies not in my life experiences. And so that's that part of that dimension of recognizing the need to move from independence to interdependence, where you recognize the gifts that God has given you, but you recognize that those gifts can only be used to their fullest realm, power, magnitude when you submit them to him and you allow him to show you how he wants to use those gifts, right? So spiritual wealth is really, really huge. Uh, the next one is your soulful wealth, which, you know, the Bible is really, really peculiar about this. It says, beloved, I pray that you be in good health and that you prosper to the degree that your soul prospers. So if you break that scripture down as an example, the prosperity that we all seek, be it in our health, be it in uh, our finances, is directly relegated to our soul our mind will and emotions well romans 12 tells us to not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind which is where you're so again what are you doing to nurture your soul how do you guard you know the bible talks about the eyes and gates and what we allow into us 
how good of a steward are you over the soulish realm of who you are, right? Relational, we were talking about that early on. Yeah, he's an outstanding business owner. He's an outstanding leader in the community, but his wife can't stand him. His kids don't know him. <laughs> so he's financially well off, but relationally poor. Yeah. That's not where you want to be, right? Yeah. What are you doing to cultivate and nurture relational wealth between all the relationships that matter in your life, right? Physical. Um, you know, we are what we eat. There's so much that our body, the ways that our body have been created to where we can naturally heal ourselves. We put in so much junk in our bodies, toxins and things that just tear down the natural immune system that God has within us. So how good a steward are you over your physical wealth, right? So we got spiritual, we got soulful, we got relational, we got physical, then we got influential, right? John Maxwell says leadership, bar none, is simply influence. You can't be a leader of one. You can only lead people who look to you for leadership. So what are you doing to cultivate, to be in a position where you can use the gifts that God has given you to influence the decision making of other people to lead them to what God's called them to do, right? Really, really powerful. Social is another one, which really speaks to your reputation within your community. What is your community and the place that you live in saying about how integral it is that you are a part of their community? Are you adding to or are you taking away from that community, right? And then the last one, which everybody wants to talk about is the financial piece. What are you doing to grow, <laughs> be a reservoir, as I put it, that uh, allows money to flow into you and to flow out to you, right? So many people want to get it in and hold on to it, not realizing the way to keep it flowing is to let it back out, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, coming up this coming Thursday, uh, is is an event that you are putting on, um, which let me go this way, which is a master class. I want you to talk about the tell tell the folks about the master class, how they can um, register for it. I uh, think you still register for it, and then um, what they can expect um, yeah. uh, for, uh, out of out of coming and attending the master class. Yeah, man, it's a great opportunity too. When was the last time that you were intentional? about creating the kind of future that you know you're supposed to be living. And so the name of our masterclass is how to live your life on FIRE, F-I-R-E. FIRE is an acronym that we use for financially independent and retired early. Now, if you're watching this broadcast, doesn't that just sound very attractive, yeah. right? Yeah. Getting to a place where you're financially independent and retired early. So great marketing in terms of just that terminology. But what you're going to find out, whether it's through my new book that's coming out or through the masterclass, is as much as I'm interested in helping you become financially independent and retired early, I'm even more interested in getting you to be refired early about the very reason for your being, the very nature that, the very reason that you were created. It's all about being in a position where you get to discover your why, you get to discover your purpose, and you start living into that because... What I know to be true is everything that we desire in life sits on the other side of our purpose. And so I want to help you discover what your owner's manual says about your life, what it says about the kind of business you're supposed to own and start, what it says about the kind of impact, the kind of influence you're supposed to have in there. And once we get that thing figured out, we will define the kind of legacy impacting changes that you will make on earth while you're still here, such that even when you're gone, you will be speaking in volumes, like the work that you've done, the impact that you've had will like reverberate throughout all of earth because you discovered your why, you discovered why you were created. Along with doing that, we wanna empower you with wealth. We don't want money to be an obstacle to you living into your big why. And so in the masterclass, we're going to uncover at least eight different strategies that we show that can put you in a position to where you can get your money working harder for you than you're accustomed to working for it. You see, we've been sold a bill of goods, go to school, get a good job, graduate and work hard. 
nobody's ever told us. And if they've told us, they certainly, hasn't, they certainly haven't shown us how we can flip that equation around and get our money working equally, if not harder for us than we're accustomed to working for it. So we'll explore a bunch of different opportunities where we routinely help our clients earn anywhere from as little as 1% to as much as 25%, not for the year, but on a monthly basis. We'll show you how you can turn risky assets into risk-free and even tax-free streams of passive income in as little as five minutes uh, during our deep dive masterclass. So it's happening Thursday, November the 11th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Would love for you to come hang out with us. To do so, all you have to do is uh, go to this website, www livingyourlifeonfire.com and you will have an opportunity to register. I know Leroy will also provide the details uh, in the show notes uh, that accompany this broadcast. Uh, but do that. Once you register, you're going to get an opportunity to start the process of discovering your why. It's a $50 gift that I give you. You're going to go through an online assessment through my partnership with the Y Institute. You'll be able to take that online assessment and identify which one of the nine whys speak to the very reason that you were created to exist and to do great exploits here on Earth. Wow. Uh, so this common thread you, you don't want to miss this opportunity. And, and you want to tell, if you can, tell them again how much it costs. It is F R E E. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think the greatest I don't think investment the, that you will make. The people in the back row heard that. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, man. Honestly, the, the level of information that we share, this is not your traditional masterclass. Um, it, it is so rich with information. We've had people just share so much gratitude with just how impactful um, our master classes have been with the content. It's worth thousands of dollars, to be honest with you. Uh, but it's one of many ways that we want to give back to those who may not have access to the same level of information, insights, wisdom, uh, opportunities that we have. And so I, I love doing them. It's a ball. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the great thing. My, my, my mentor, he always says, we don't have a wealth, uh, a wealth gap. We have an information gap. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you if you have the if you have access to the information, you can do and build those things that you want to be able to do. So that's what this masterclass will give you. I promise you. And and I, I don't say this about every event. I don't say this about things because y'all know I'm serious about my 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 assignment is to make you better by the end of the year than you were at the beginning of the year. And, and by bringing you um, people like Ike, master classes that he's given, where I know for sure you're going to be better after you attend this master class than you were before you learned about this master class. Because now that you know, now that you know you have the opportunity to be able to increase your intelligence, to increase your your knowledge your your the information that you have and the resources that you will gain from this it, it will can't do anything but make you better so you want to do yourself a favor and be in the room be in the room this thursday and what, what time is it again um it starts uh, at 1 p.m eastern noon central uh 11 a.m mountain and 10 a.m pacific time depending on where you are dialing in from so Absolutely, and I'll make sure that we have the um, the 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 registration information in the um, in the comment section in the link. I'll pin it in there so that folks can go register and and become to understand how to live your life on fire. And yes, that sir. is, <laughs> I love that. And I didn't I didn't know what there was an acronym for, but I like that. To yeah, be man. financial uh, uh, financially independent, independent retired early. Retired early. How yeah. about that, y'all? How about that? Who wants to be financially independent and retire early? Come on. <laughs> so if that's you, if you want to be financially independent and retire early, then you need to register for this masterclass so that so that I can show you and, and pour into you 
those principles and those strategies that you need in order to be able to manifest that. Really quickly, before we go, we're finishing out 2021. Yes, sir. And we're getting ready to go into 2022. Um, other than attending this masterclass, because this is this is how they can end 2021 strong is by attending yes, this. But yep. what can what would you um, what advice would you give to an entrepreneur or even an aspiring entrepreneur um, to be able to to do uh, in order to be able to go into uh, 2022 um, prepared uh, prepared? And as yep. I said, and this came to me the other day. It's building season. What does your 2022, what are you, I mean, what are you building in 2022? What would, yeah. what would your advice be to them about building in 2022? Yeah, I would say, make sure you are building a company that matters. What do I mean by that? The only reason that um, customers ever patronize a business and patronize it in droves is because you're so solving some really, really big problems big problems in their life that quite frankly, they can't solve on their own. So they either need to be aware of those problems and it'd be a bother, a hindrance to them getting to where they know they should be, or you need to make them aware of that problem. How many of us have been driving down the highway, not paying attention, and we start to make a left-hand turn, and all of a sudden the 18 wheeler almost <laughs> knocks us right off the side of the road. That's called a blind spot. It can be one of the most devastating things in our lives. So for many of the clients that you're seeking to serve, they may not know what's in their blind spot. It's your responsibility mm -hmm. to make sure that they're aware. And when it comes to solving big problems so you can be compensated what you're worth, you wanna make sure whatever the business solution is that you're bringing into the market focuses on one of these five things. You either need to be trying to help people make more money, help them save more money, help keep them legal, <laughs> Keep them out of getting locked up somewhere, right? Helping, helping prove or increase their relationships, right? We talked about relational wealth. And um, the fifth one is, um, is uh, we talked about making more money, saving more money, uh, improving their relationships, keep them out of jail. And the fifth one's coming a blank on that, but it'll come back to me in a second. But those four, if you can focus on any one of those four, you're gonna be like a lot years ahead of the average Joe. Uh, but those are big problems that people have. And if you have a solution that, you know, addresses that and addresses that very well, then you're, you're gonna get compensated well, my friend. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, outside of the, the masterclass, um, if someone wants to, um, uh, buy your products or services or take advantage of your products or services, how can they connect with you or even have you come to, to speak? Because I believe you, you do you do speaking. Yeah, well. absolutely. So, so how can people connect with you? We are, we are launching a new book that uh, really speaks to a lot of what I've just shared today, but even in greater depth. Um, that's available right now, I believe, on Amazon. It's called The Manifest Wealth Safely Method. And so um, you can either go to Amazon, type my name, or pull up on my author list of books. Uh, but also you'll have, you'll find that on uh, www.manifestwealthsafely.com, okay? So that's the landing page that we're creating for the book and the library of solutions that fall under that umbrella. We've got everything from a prophetic journal to and affirmations book to a productivity planner uh, to workbooks, audios. We've got online trainings that you can get access to that help you on either one of those different pillars, whether it's on the entrepreneurship piece or on the leadership piece or on the wealth piece. Um, so we have resources and tools for everybody with any and every budget size that you have. So dig into that and uh, you know feel free to reach out you know either on LinkedIn. Uh, probably the best way to get a hold of me on LinkedIn. I'm usually there pretty, pretty good, pretty strong. So, absolutely. Well, brother, it is always, always, always a pleasure to have these conversations with you. Um, I, I told y'all that this conversation was going to be rich. And, and when I say rich, I wasn't talking just about financially, I was talking about so, socially, um, personally, holistically. Um, just all those psychologically, all of those aspects that are us, that make us 
who we are as people and individuals to make us rich in, in our conversations, to make us rich in our intellect, to make us rich in, in our relationships that we have um, with, with others, to make us, you know, let's say it, rich in our businesses because we are in business to make money. So having all of those dynamics together and understanding how important they are um, and how important it is for us to be able to have these conversations, uh, but then also to, to take these conversations and, and make them into um, uh, actionable moments that we go, we go out and we create and we produce so that we're doing the will of our father, that we're doing the assignments that we've been given, that we that we've been given, and that we make a difference in this world. You know, that we make a difference, that we have an impact in in people's lives and in what we do. And as as my pastor charged us to make life better for someone else. How are you making life better for someone else? So, brother, I I thank you for for joining me tonight. I thank you for all that you have poured into us. Um, I have this. I have a theory that I call the picture in the glass. Um, and, and it's it's where you go to a restaurant and you know how you sit at the table and there are glasses that are at each table. And, and we, we all, we go and sit and then they'll bring out a pitcher of water, they'll bring out a pitcher of lemonade or tea or whatever. And the, the, the pitcher is used to pour into the glasses. Well, I, I say sometimes we're the pitcher and sometimes we're the glass. Sometimes we get poured into and then sometimes we're responsible to do the pouring into. Yeah. You know, we get poured into so that we can pour into. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I got I got poured into <laughs> tonight. So thank you for pouring into us tonight, and and thank you for get for you getting ready to pour into us this coming Thursday uh, in the masterclass. Um, how to live life on fire. Uh, you don't want to miss that. Get poured into you all. We're ending this year. What better way to, to get poured into than to be in a place and, and to be able to say that you're going to come out of that place richer than you were before you walked in into it because of the knowledge, the information, and the resources that this that this brother is going to be sharing uh, on Thursday. So you don't want to miss it. Uh, one more time, Ike, before we close out, if you can give your contact information so that people can, can connect with you. Yeah, so a couple of different ways. Like I said, the new book and resources you're going to find at www.manifestwealthsafely.com. Uh, outside of that, you can find out more information about myself at www.thecochinerinstitute.com as well. Either one of those two websites, um, you'll be able to get a hold of me there. You can always send me an email to ike at thecochinerinstitute.com as well. And that's another way to get a hold of me. Absolutely. So once again, brother, I thank you. I appreciate you for all that you're doing, all that you do. Thank you for sharing. Um, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and talk with us and, and to be able to make us richer and to pour into us. This has been another episode, y'all, of, of, uh, uh, of the brand new development series brought to you by um, JNF Enterprises and Black Professional Men whose mission it is to ensure the future of the African-American male. And the way that we do that, we only know how to do that by pulling in the people, bringing you um, individuals and organizations that make us better. This is 2021, you all. We're leaving the familiar to elevate our influence. And what better way to be able to elevate your influence than to attend uh, this masterclass that is gonna put you on fire it's going to put you on fire for on, not only you, on. <laughs> but those around you. So absolutely. Let's get on fire, y'all. Let's get on fire. Let's catch you on fire. We'll have the information in the, uh, in the comment section for you all to be able to go and register. We want to see you in the place. We want to have you uh, in there. Bring your notebooks, bring your pads. And I believe it is virtual. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so you can you can sit in the comfort of your own home. You can sit yeah. there and 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 be able to gather the information and to be able to to take charge and to be able to leave that familiar, like I said, to elevate your influence for 2022, y'all. So what are you? It's it's building season. What are you building 
in 2022. We'll talk to y'all soon.